I think there are uh, reasons outside of security as well. Yeah. Uh, there is sometimes it uh, it's the hallucination, sometimes it's the wrong information that uh, the models are generating. It's also like how do you really scale AI, how do you make it financially viable. So there are a lot of problems. We as Skyflow are focusing on how do we ensure that anyways we are living in this non-deterministic world mm -hmm. with AI models, at least May, let's make the security and the privacy part deterministic. The models need to understand who you are, understand the context that is it customer A or customer B. But it doesn't need to know that the customer A's name is Roshmik and mm -hmm. his address is okay. whatever it is, right? But I think, I think there is a saying, right? Uh, history repeats itself or I think there is another one that we should learn from yeah. history. Uh, I, it reminds me of the initial days of social media and Facebook, which the company yeah. doesn't exist today, right, technically. <laughs> okay. uh, so I think, I think it's not different, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the motivation mm -hmm. and there is a risk, there is a big risk and that's why we are here to talk about it, yeah. that don't. <laughs> uh, the simple answer is don't and yeah. we are, of course, we are providing a way that you can do it securely. Yeah. Like I, welcome to Cipher 2025. This is Siddharth Jindal from AI Media House, and we are sitting with Roshmik Saha, CTO and co-founder of Skyflow. Skyflow helps companies to protect their sensitive data. Hi, Roshmik. Uh, good to have you here. Hi, Siddharth. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I wanted to understand like uh, how are you liking Cypher and how is your experience till now? I think it's a great event. It's amazing to see leaders and engineers in the same place focusing on AI, focusing on how to actually get models to production, how to do it safely in a responsible way. and kind of have an open discussion about the challenges we are facing and how to really get the value out of all the dollars we have put in to yeah. build these models. So like what, what were the highlights for, for you? I think definitely the conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, the highlight is like where people are asking me questions that uh, what happens to my AI model when I mm -hmm. say deploy it somewhere else? How do I make sure that my infosec or my AppSec teams are comfortable with it. How do we, how do we make sure that the users of the models are actually trusting the model? So very interesting questions overall. Yeah. In your session, you touched upon a very important point like security in AI. So with uh, many companies wants to scale AI, uh, but with that also comes concerns around the sensitive data, like it shouldn't get leaked out in the public and that. Mm -hmm. It should be safe and secure. Yeah. So I wanted to understand like how are you solving that challenge with Skyflow? Yeah, so um, I think there is a recent MIT paper that says that 95% of pilots uh, don't make it to production. I think there are uh, reasons outside of security as well. Yeah. Uh, there is sometimes it's, uh, it's the hallucination, sometimes it's the wrong information that uh, the models are generating. It's also like how do you really scale AI? How do you make it financially viable? So there are a lot of problems. We as Skyflow are focusing on how do we ensure that the data that is being used by the AI that is getting fed to the AI is done in a responsible way. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the answer is really simple, right? Uh, what we are saying is do not expose PII to mm -hmm. the model itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once you can do that and do that in a way that you still are able to get the answer that how much money do I have in my bank account yeah. or what are my customer loyalty points look like, right? And it just use a token. Like the answer is as simple as anonymize the data, interact with the models without losing the context. You get the hyper personalization, which we are all looking for. We want them to, the models to do the task for us. The AI systems to become more and more of an extension of you. And we can enable that. We can enable that from first principles and without like depending too much of concepts like guardrails, which, which works most of the time, but not always. What we are saying is, anyways, we are living in this non-deterministic world mm -hmm. with AI models. At least 
make, let's make the security and the privacy part deterministic. So, so in layman terms, can you explain how can we make uh, AI personalized without giving the PII information? So I'll, I'll take my story from the uh, presentation that <laughs> okay. uh, like this, uh, there was a movie right yeah. called uh, Reservoir Dogs mm -hmm. and they were of course doing something not great. They wanted mm -hmm. to uh, rob a bank, but they protected their identity by using like Mr. Brown and Mr. Pink. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is not very different mm -hmm. that the models need to understand who you are, understand the context that is it customer A or customer mm -hmm. B, but it doesn't need to know that the customer A's name is Roshmik and mm -hmm. his address is okay. whatever it is, right? But as long as they are fed the information that they need that, okay, mm -hmm. this is a customer or this is an employee mm -hmm. and this is the type of privileges that mm -hmm. I have. It is, is it my data? Am I looking at my customer's data? Am I yeah. a customer success agent? As long as we have enforced that, mm -hmm. we have an uh, automated way to ascertain that and we use like zero trust principles to do that. Yeah. And then it is safe, right? Then you are actually able to mm -hmm. get the answers. And that's all we are doing. We, are, we have a technology called Data Privacy Vault mm -hmm. or the product is called Data Privacy mm -hmm. Vault. What it does is uh, in cases of like transactional aspects, it is protecting your databases. Mm -hmm. In the case of AI, it is actually protecting the communication between mm -hmm. the human or kind of the systems that are training the models yeah. and the models itself. So we sit in between the models and the customers, so Understood. to say. Understood. Yeah. So lately, like there's a trend going on on the internet, and like many people are uploading their images on uh, Chat GPT and mm -hmm. Gemini, where it's creating better images like uh, figurines and maybe like Ghibli in, you know, uh, in Chat GPT's case. So, do you see there's a risk associated with it, with it? Like, should people actually upload their photos and like what can be the risk? Is it safe? So, I think I think there is a saying, right? Uh, history repeats itself, or I think there is another one that you should learn from yeah. history. Uh, I, it reminds me of the initial days of social media and Facebook, which the company yeah. doesn't exist today, right? Technically. <laughs> okay. uh, so I think, I think it is not different, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the motivation mm. that at that moment, social media came out, people mm. wanted to share. Today, mm. uh, AI is out there and people are excited about it. Yeah. People want to test it with their own images mm -hmm. and I'm, not sure the what the fine print is, mm -hmm. and even like Sam Altman says that don't trust AI with your uh, PII, and there's a lot of PII in yeah. uh, an image. Yeah, it yeah. can be like who your family is, yeah. whom in the mm -hmm. background there are like probably mm -hmm. there are there can be text. Yeah. Uh, there can be like you know, some some people are uh, mm -hmm. using agents to like apply for their passports or apply for a visa, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of PII and sensitive data that is flowing into the yeah. uh, models or the interaction, right? And there is a risk, there is a big risk and that's why we are here to talk about it. Yeah. That don't. <laughs> uh, the simple answer is don't and yeah. we are, of course, we are providing a way that you can do it securely. Yeah. Like I, I really hate applying for a visa where I have to fill up like 12 pages of forms and like yes. submit 50 documents. I would really like an agent to do that for me and not a human agent like an automated agent right and but there is a way to do it securely yeah. and like look at the data privacy vault architecture um, I think people are using it people yeah. are getting value out of it and basically essentially redact the data or like anonymize the data where it is not needed like speaking of data like there's a new technology MCP that like, uh, mm -hmm. so where it allows uh, an LLM to get uh, data from multiple sources like this I think similar to API, many people call it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know from you, like, is the technology matured enough that companies should start using it or, the, or like it can also leak data? So I think uh, the <laughs> way it is currently, it is definitely uh, leaking data. And so let's go back, right? Yeah. Uh, what does MCP do? So MCP, we are saying that we want to expose the data that is there um, in any kind of system, right? Hmm. Be it GitHub, be yeah. it Atlassian, like wherever your ticketing system is, wherever your code is, wherever your data is, right? You want to expose it. You want yeah. to expose it to the agents, to the AI systems. Hmm. Not every time we say this, we 
we should always say it uh, in a responsible way. Sometimes we miss that part and I think it is happening today. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, companies are uh, basically exposing their uh, pilot MCP mm -hmm. servers mm -hmm. to their customers or opening it up. And definitely the data is, uh, and there many people are actually mm -hmm. going back and kind of taking out the MCP servers. So at the core of it, the problem is that you want to expose all the data. Mm -hmm. Unless the AI models gets the data, is useless, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot really function. Yeah. The whole idea is how do you put access control on mm -hmm. top of it? Mm -hmm. And when you are exposing the data through the MCP servers, at source you cannot because mm -hmm. you want to expose all the data. Mm -hmm. It is just how do you anonymize the data yeah. without lo losing the integrity of the data mm -hmm. and how do you make sure that the agents can access the okay. right form of the data. And then you can say that, hey, this is my mm -hmm. Confidential code, this is completely redacted. This is the part where you only need anonymization. And that will be the responsible way. And that, that is where the MCP servers will actually go to production and okay. stay there. Right. And then you will not have to shut it down because your CISO and came and said that you have like 10 different holes here. Like, uh, it's very well known that AI thrives on data and like privacy is non negotiable. Can we truly balance both? So, I would go and say that we can fundamentally solve this problem. So, like, I don't like the word balancing. Like, I was recently having a conversation uh, with some of my engineers about uh, heuristics and yeah. kind of what is privacy by design or mm -hmm. how to fundamentally solve a problem. I believe in uh, first principles approach. I think we can solve the problem fundamentally okay. that we we can extract all the power mm -hmm. out of AI without sacrificing privacy or security, right? So, uh, and we can prove it mathematically that how, how do we solve that problem? So, I think let's move away from these mm -hmm. partial solutions as I was mentioning yeah. before, like let's make privacy non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Let's fundamentally solve it. And it is possible. We have proven that we can solve it without losing performance, without losing relevance, without mm -hmm. Without losing the like the hyper personalization that we all want. Great. So yeah, thank you, uh, Roshmik, for your time. It was very nice chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure.